From Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Whenever it's portrayed as about farmers, it is not. It goes back to the hardworking homeowners in Omaha, Lincoln, Grand Island, Plymouth, Nebraska. That's who's going to get relief out of this bill. Senators make progress on changing taxes in our state. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Taxes, it's something that impacts us all. Senators have been working on a comprehensive tax package all session long. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez gives us an update on where senators are in the process of making any changes. The comprehensive tax package once again hits the debate floor, only this time being broken down one by one. State senators will be voting on lowering the top rate from 6.84% to 5.84%, which if passed, is still the highest tax rate in the Midwest. The sky is not falling. When it does, the legislature and the governor will adjust revenues and spending like it has for the past 150 years. We are trying to balance things. Right now we have a surplus of revenue and the logical thing would be to give it back to the taxpayers. The reservation some senators have is knowing if the state will have enough money coming in if the legislature lowers taxes. Whether or not there is a storm to be weathered when there are economic downturns, that there is enough revenue that will not harm the basic aspects of our budget. Other tax cuts include property tax, income tax, and incrementally eliminating social security tax. If we were a business and we had written a, a feasibility assessment, we'd be looking at what was going to go on the next decade and the decade after that. So I have concerns about the amount of revenue that's going to be generated in the future because I don't see any trends saying that the demographic age-wise is really going to change that much in Nebraska. A big goal for senators is finding ways to gain and retain young people in the state. But some senators worry that if nothing is done with taxes, it could have a detrimental impact. My district borders three different states, Iowa, Kansas, and Missouri. And we have a large number of people who uh, choose to live in Iowa, Missouri, and Kansas and work in Nebraska to take their, their money, their houses, raise their kids in a state other than Nebraska because of our tax situation. Senators passed individual tax rates 43 to zero and are now working on corporate tax rates. They will continue to work on each separately so that they can get a vote completed. Reporting at the state capitol, Ariana Martinez, Channel 8 News. Lawmakers have also approved a bill that centers around future casinos. Apparently, the state has seen quite a big request from parts of Nebraska wanting to expand gambling in their area. The bill that passed the first round today would set up guidelines on what and how that would be handled. The Nebraska Racing and Gaming Commission would have to conduct a study on each request. Six counties, including Lancaster, Douglas, Adams, Dakota, Hall, and Platte, can already build a casino after voters had their say. Some lawmakers want to see casinos further out west. Also happening today, local thieves will have an even harder time unloading stolen catalytic converters. Omaha has a new ordinance that went into effect this morning. Anyone caught carrying a converter will be required to have proof it's theirs or have a special permit, and that permit costs $10. You need to be at least 18 years old to apply for one. You're also disqualified if you've been convicted of a theft in the last five years. For unable to backtrack that and say who the victim is of the crime and, and move forward on prosecution. So what this ordinance does is make it illegal to possess a catalytic converter um, if they do not have the required permit and or documentation that they own those catalytic converters or which vehicle that came from. Omaha police say this will help them crack down on thieves who've been uh, pulled over carrying converters, but officers had no way to prove they were stolen in the past. Now, the alarming trend has cost hundreds of Nebraskans thousands of dollars in repairs. While thousands of Ukrainians are fighting daily to protect their homeland. Today, Governor Ricketts announced that Nebraska is sending supplies to Ukraine to help those on the front lines. 550 pieces of protective equipment are being sent to Ukraine after the state called on local agencies to gather any expired gear that they had that could be donated. 
Now, while the gear is expired here in the U.S., it can still provide valuable protection to those overseas, protection that is desperately needed. In Ukraine, body armor and helmets are the most requested thing, and the idea that local law enforcement may have some access to donate was thrown around. Governor Ricketts says this is one small way the state can step up to help during this unprovoked violence. We'll have much more on this story tonight at 6 o'clock. Also, on a related note, University of Nebraska Kearney students are collecting donations to help Ukrainian refugees. They're putting together hygiene kits. Uh, we're talking about uh, a bath towel, washcloth, some soap, toothbrush, band-aids, and more. You can help by donating these items on the UNK campus and throughout the Kearney community now through April 18th. We invite you to click on this story on our website, klkntv.com, for a full list of locations. Okay, now to the uh, latest on the war in Ukraine and possible signs of movement out of a round of peace talks. Russia claiming it will drastically scale back its military operations around the capital of Kyiv, but the Biden administration is skeptical, saying it's not taking anything Russia says at face value. ABC's James Longman has more. This morning, the Russian military claiming a new shift in strategy in Ukraine. They now say they're going to drastically decrease military activities around Kyiv and the northern city of Chernihiv after negotiations between Ukrainian and Russian delegations. But they do say this is not a ceasefire. And this morning, we've heard for ourselves that the battle is still raging. We came to the suburbs of Kyiv, a few miles from Irpin. Residents are finally getting a chance to get out. They've been living underground for weeks. But as you can hear, the war rages. And this, this is one of the areas that the Russians say they are now going to leave. But as you can hear, there are no signs of this war stopping. We meet Taras, a local councillor here. He's volunteering to get residents out. <laughs> sure, I'm afraid to go in, he says. A normal person should be afraid. If I wasn't, I'd be mad. He lost his own home, but he's committed to getting people out. So now he's literally running back to meet up with his colleagues there, and they're going in to the town. And as we've been speaking, we've just been hearing bombardment after bombardment. But that's how committed he is to saving the people who live in his town. An hour later, a van pulls up. A small group of Irpin residents rush out, holding anything they can. It's a lie that it's safe, says this man. The gunfire and shelling continues as it was before. We managed to get out, but there are more people back there. With the bombs still falling, Ukrainian troops around the capital are still on high alert. President Zelensky warning for Ukrainians to keep up their guard. The Russian army still has significant potential to continue attacks against our state. In the US, the White House says they are seeing some Russian troops moving away from the Kyiv region, but believe the move is a redeployment and not a withdrawal. President Biden expressing his skepticism. We'll see. I don't read anything into it until I see what their actions are. We'll see if they follow through on what they're suggesting. And the Pentagon warning the Russians may be moving these troops to escalate the war in other parts of the country. We all should be prepared to watch for a major offensive against other areas of Ukraine. Even after Russia's claim to remove troops from the area, there have been several new incidents of Russian shelling into residential areas near the capital. Each day the war goes on, more and more Ukrainians are forced from their homes. The UN says more than 4 million people have now fled the country and more than 10 million internally displaced. Those leaving Erpin this morning just add to those staggering numbers. So what we are seeing and hearing here just shows why there's so much skepticism in Ukraine about this Russian agreement. President Zelensky wants security guarantees so that if Ukraine is attacked in the future, there'd be guarantor countries like the United States who would provide weapons or a no-fly zone. But we are not there yet. James Longman, ABC News in Ukraine. It is time for your first forecast. Uh, cool, cloudy and windy today, John. Remember yesterday when it was in the 70s and yes. 80s and nearly 90 degrees for some of you? That is definitely not the case uh, this afternoon. It is much cooler. Uh, it's cloudy. It's been very blustery and it's sending wind chill values even lower only into the 20s this afternoon. We've had highs. May well, temperatures have mainly been sticking around right in the 30s. You can see as we take a live look from Southeast Community College, we've got cloudy skies overhead right now. The temperature 
change from yesterday at this time is 25 to nearly 50 degrees. Uh, it's 56 degrees cooler in Hastings, 44 degrees cooler in Hebron, and 30 degrees cooler in Lincoln. It's 38 degrees in the capital city, 38 as well in Hebron, and 34 is the air temperature in Hastings. And winds continue to gust out of the northwest at times as much as 41 miles per hour, which it's doing right now at the airport in Lincoln. And we're likely to keep the winds gusting as we go through the rest of the evening and through much of the night, although they'll start to back off just a little bit. Here's a look at the wind chill values. It's feeling like it's in the low 20s in Kearney and Hastings. It feels like it's in the 20, it's 27 degrees in Lincoln. Now radar is quiet right now, but as we look back into the western portion of the state, State, you will notice there are snow showers uh, from North Platte out towards Scotts Bluff. Those snow showers may start to move east through the rest of this evening. We may have a chance for a little rain mixing with snow later on tonight. Uh, 37 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight under cloudy skies will time out when we may see some precipitation. How much snow you can expect by tomorrow morning and if the sun returns. Those details coming up in my Storm Alert Team forecast. All right, thank you, John. The family of actor Bruce Willis revealed he's suffering from a serious medical condition. It's affecting his cognitive abilities and he's taking a break from acting. His family says he was recently diagnosed with aphasia. It's a condition where a person loses the ability to speak and understand language. As a result, the diehard and Pulp Fiction star is, quote, stepping away from acting indefinitely. The news comes just after the actor celebrated his 67th birthday. Now to more fallout from that stunning Oscars moment, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. The Academy's Board of Governors meeting today to talk about potential possible punishments for Smith. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. The Academy's Board of Governors now discussing its next move in response to this shocking moment on the Oscar stage. Oh, wow! In a new letter obtained by ABC News overnight, top officials say they're upset and outraged over Will Smith's onstage assault of Chris Rock, but they warn this must follow an official process that will take a few weeks. The Board of Governors typically meets post-Oscars, but almost never this quickly. The group of Hollywood power players, including View co-host Whoopi Goldberg. There are consequences. Yes. There are big consequences. There has to be. Uh, well, yeah, because nobody, <coughs> nobody is okay yeah. with what happened. Nobody. Yeah. But experts say it's unlikely those consequences would include revoking Smith's Best Actor Award. It could be something as small as nothing, or it could be upwards of expulsion uh, from the Academy for Will Smith. There have been calls for him to have his Oscar rescinded, and that is highly unlikely to happen apologizing to Rock, calling his actions, quote, unacceptable and inexcusable. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Host Wanda Sykes telling NBC's Ellen DeGeneres she's still in shock, expressing disappointment that Will Smith wasn't escorted out. And, and it, was, it was sickening. Also going on to talk about seeing Chris Rock after the show. I saw Chris, uh, you know, at, at Guy's party. And uh, and as soon as I walked up to him, the first thing he said was, I'm so sorry. It was supposed to be your night. It was supposed you and Amy and Regina, y'all were doing such a great job. I'm so sorry. This is now going to be about this. The comedian has yet to comment publicly, but tonight he's set to perform two shows in Boston. Ticket reseller TickPick tweeting Monday, we sold more tickets to see Chris Rock overnight than we did in the past month combined. And the Academy says any action it takes will likely take a few weeks to decide. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And coming up, a, a, in a split second, everything changed for this base jumper. Hear his story of survival after the break. Is your heart focused on caring for others? At Synergy Home Care of Lincoln, we're committed to providing the best in-home care and service to our clients.
now to a base jumper's close call in Arizona, his parachute ripping after he soared off of a cliff. The terrifying moments all caught on camera. He's now telling a story of survival to ABC News. Here's Rena Roy. Three, two, one, see ya. When 29 year old Johnny DeJulius leaped from this cliff straight into the sky, things were going as planned, but in a split second, that changed. Shred my can't be. His parachute ripping, sending him plummeting 50 miles per hour into a jagged spire of rock at Arizona's Superstition Mountains. The chute getting caught just 50 feet from the ground. I'm hanging on this wall, not in the harness, I ungeared. And I was kind of just Spider-Man to this wall, right, for like an hour. 60 minutes of superhuman-like strength keeping him from falling. The stuntman and wrestling coach was able to hoist himself up, grab his phone from his pocket, and make a call. Dude, are you, are you good? Yeah, I'm just hung up. I can climb down, but then we have to ungear. It's going to be sketchy. A risky jump to safety. I just freaking huck it, land on my back on this bush. You had to jump backwards? I couldn't really turn around. I call it a, oh crap, jump. <laughs> I walked away with no injuries, which is very rare for, for, a, for a jump like that. The daredevil has jumped off a skyscraper in Panama and has even gone wing walking. He says he'll definitely keep jumping despite this close call. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In St. Joseph, Missouri, they're cleaning up today after a tornado. The National Weather Service has confirmed an EF1 tornado hit the area last night. It had winds up to 90 miles per hour. Along with the tornado, as you can see, winds caused a lot of damage across the area, including roof and structural damage to homes. Also, multiple trees were twisted across parts of the city. No. Your storm alert team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. Those are part of the storms that were just to our south and southeast uh, t last evening, and then they were quickly moving eastward into western and northwestern Missouri and Iowa. Tonight, the low area of low pressure and the cold front that brought the cooler temperatures here and the warmer temperatures yesterday, as well as the thunderstorms, are now moving through the Midwest and that's producing heavy amounts of rain as well as the threat for severe weather, strong winds and even tornadoes. Tornado warnings right now into western Kentucky and through central portions of Mississippi as that line keeps moving to the east. Now on the back side of the system, it is much cooler, it is cloudy and we've even got snow showers that are falling out into the western port or western half of the state out towards North Platte and just to, to the south of Scott's Bluff and we will have a chance for some snow showers around here later on tonight. Here's a live look right now from Schoen's Roofing in Beatrice and things are all quiet, although we do have clouds or cloudy skies there. Also the case from Honda of Lincoln looking off to the north and west. We've got cloudy skies and if you look closely, the camera's shaking around just a little bit as winds are definitely gusting uh, still upwards of 40 miles per hour. Now temperatures significantly cooler than 24 hours ago when we were in the 70s in Lincoln. It's now 30 degrees cooler, but look out towards Hastings and Hebron. So much to the point we don't have a color for it. Uh, it's upwards of 45 degrees cooler than 24 hours ago. That's where temperatures are sitting out in the mid 30s out in the Tri Cities. It's 38 in Hebron, 36 in Friend, and 38 degrees right now in Lincoln. I mentioned the winds, they are still gusting out of the northwest. 41 miles per hour at the airport as of 5 o'clock, 36 mile per hour gust in Beatrice, and near 40 mile per hour gust in Grand Island. Now, even as we go through later on this evening, we'll still keep the stronger winds around, although maybe not quite as strong. We're talking winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Here is Stormcast. We will remain cloudy, so I've turned the clouds off so it's easier to see the precipitation. There will be a chance for just a couple of scattered rain showers initially before mixing with some snow showers and then becoming all snow showers as we go through the overnight hours. You'll notice this, especially after about 11 o'clock through maybe 3, 4 o'clock in the morning will be the best chance for some of these snow showers moving through the area. I'm not expecting much in the way of accumulating snow. The ground is relatively warm at this point, so if we see any snow sticking on the ground, it's likely to be more on grassy surfaces or elevated elevated surfaces or maybe the top of a car, but we're talking a few tenths of an inch of snow and that should be about it. Now temperature wise tonight we will be getting cooler temperatures down to 37 degrees by 10 low 30s by 4 eventually 
we should fall into the middle to upper 20s with winds gusting north uh, up, upwards of 30 miles per hour. That's going to take our wind chill values even lower. You'll see that on Stormcast. Take a look, find a location near where you will be early tomorrow morning. And by 7 o'clock, we're talking wind chill values down into the teens and approaching the single digits in some locations. It's going to be a cool and chilly start to the morning uh, with wind chills even by 9 o'clock still remaining into the teens. Now we're going to keep some clouds around early tomorrow morning. By afternoon, I think we'll see mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will be warmer than what we've had throughout the day today. Highs should be up right around 50 degrees to maybe as much as the mid 50s out to the west with some wind still gusting out of the northwest at times to 22 miles per hour. Seven day forecast shows warmer temperatures coming on Friday, but if you're heading up Friday evening, do know we're probably going to see some showers moving into the area. On Saturday right now, a high of 63. Sunday will have a chance for a few scattered showers, mainly to the north of Lincoln, a high of 67 degrees. Next week, some more chances for rain coming in uh, just about every other day, but Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday will have a chance with some windy conditions. And right now, looking ahead to April 9th, which would be the Huskers spring game, we're looking for sunny skies and a temperature right around 70 degrees. Yeah, the temperature Thursday, a bit of a slap in the face, mm -hmm. but at least the weekend it was rebounding nicely and looking great. That's right. Again, maybe a few showers for areas north of Lincoln uh, Sunday evening, but again, still not too bad of a weekend. All right. Thank you very much, John. Mm -hmm. Here's a look at Wall Street now for you. Not a great day. The Dow falling by 65 points. NASDAQ is down by 177. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, after the powerful testimonies... Get to the bottom of what happened. The January 6th investigation has begun. What happens next? Plus, the new mask guidelines. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is the number one program.
Finally tonight, some pretty cool stuff here. NASA released a new image from the Hubble Space Telescope of the most distant single star it's ever observed. Nicknamed Arendelle, it's glimmering 28 billion light years away. The star could be between 50 to 500 times more massive than our sun and millions of times brighter. Scientists say it's the oldest detection of a star yet, estimating it was created 900 million years after the Big Bang. So I'll tell you what, uh, John and I, we've been talking about this. It just blows your mind if you think about that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, doesn't it? Here's the crazy thing. The light we're seeing today, that star may not even exist, but we right. won't know for 28 billion years that it doesn't exist because it takes that long for the light to get Boy, here. Boy, I'll, I'll really be old then, won't I? <laughs> yeah. It makes but me feel Rydal, so small. Right, I'll still be on the anchor desk, though, <laughs> when we find that out. He's a robot. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> Uh, John, can we get one final check on the weather? It's going to be chilly this evening. Watch out. Some rain showers may start to mix with a little snow showers, especially as we go through the overnight hours. 37 degrees by 10 o'clock. All right. Thank you, John. And thank you all for joining us. Have yourself a good night. We'll see you back here at 6. <laughs> <laughs>